Okay, what we are investigating here today is this idea that a balanced chemical equation provides just a little more than just a description of the chemicals involved. It also reveals the ratio between the reactants and the products. Now, it is a key thing that you understand that we are talking about this being in balanced chemical equations. Not every chemical equation is balanced. It has to be balanced to start with. So let's take a look at a chemical equation we've discussed before, which is propane burning. So the process of propane burning is actually propane reacting with oxygen and that produces carbon dioxide and water. Now, just as a revisiting of the equation idea, we're not saying that this is equal to that so much as we're saying this becomes this, right? Chemical bonds are broken and remade to produce this. So in a sense, they're equal, but it's a little more clear to say this becomes this through this chemical process. Anyway. The concept of balancing. The only thing you can do when you're balancing is add coefficients. You cannot change subscripts. So the first thing I like to mention is find the problem. And if we start out by looking at carbon, so three carbon atoms before this reaction, all of a sudden only one. That's not going to work. So we can put a three in front of this so that the three carbon atoms become three carbon atoms. We're good. Checking hydrogen next, eight hydrogen atoms becoming only two. That's a problem. Let's put a four here. So now that's eight hydrogen atoms. So that balances hydrogen. Now, the three and the four have also influenced oxygen. So if we look here, that's three times two or six oxygen plus another four. So that's 10 oxygen on this side. So we need to start with 10 oxygen atoms on this side. Now that we have it balanced, what we wanna look at is this idea of the ratio that's present here. This is really telling us propane plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. But even more than that, one propane molecule reacts with every five oxygen molecules to produce three carbon dioxide along with four water, right? It will always be in that ratio. So we could start looking at some simple questions like, okay, if that's the ratio, what if instead of one propane and five oxygen, what if I had two propane and 10 oxygen? What would that do? Well, that's just double what the recipe says or double what the ratio is. So two and 10 would produce six and eight, right? Now, I slipped the word recipe there. One way to look at this is kind of like when you're baking, making cookies or making a cake, right? When you're baking, you look at a recipe and then you go to your ingredients and you mix your ingredients, but you're always looking back at this recipe. If you want to double the recipe because you want to make twice as much, you can't just double one thing, you have to double everything, and then you'll end up getting double. That same concept in baking applies here. This that I've written in black is like your recipe. Now, if you want to make more, like we wanted in this case, we doubled the recipe. So since we had twice as much propane and twice as much oxygen, we get twice as much carbon dioxide and twice as much water. If we keep that same logic, we could say, well, what if we tripled the recipe? Instead of one propane and five oxygens, what if we had three propane and 15 oxygen? Well, it's that simple. It's just triple the recipe. So triple these means triple this three times three we would make nine carbon dioxide and 12 water now these two examples have been really simple ones so let's up the difficulty level just a little bit if we change up the question and say okay what if i want to make 20 
water molecules. How much propane and how much oxygen would I need if what I want to make is 20 water molecules? So we just compare again. We look at what we want to make compared to what the recipe says. The recipe says every batch will make four water molecules. I want to make 20. So how many batches is that? All I need to do is compare 4 to 20, and we see that this is basically 5 batches. So if I'm going to do 5 batches worth of water, then I'm going to need 5 batches worth of ingredients. So the recipe says 1 propane, 5 batches then would be 5 propane. The recipe says 5 oxygen, 5 batches would be 25 oxygen. If I have that much, I'm going to also make 5 batches worth of carbon dioxide, so that's going to make me 15 carbon dioxide. Now, sometimes you might not see this real simple like batches number sense, it might just not pop into your head. So we can keep track of this with unit factoring also. Now let's look at an example with unit factoring. Let's say that we wanted to make 33 carbon dioxide molecules. Now, you mathy people, you already see the batches. But let's say that you just don't quite see the batches at first. If you don't see the batch number at first, how do you go about doing this? Like, if I want to make 33 carbon dioxide, how much of this other stuff do I need? Well, unit factoring can be used even in this situation. I want 33 carbon dioxides, and I have up here equalities between these different substances. In other words, for every three carbon dioxides, I need five oxygens or for every three carbon dioxides, I need one propane. So I can do this as a couple unit factor problems. I'm gonna write that up here. If I want 33 carbon dioxides, I know that for every three carbon dioxides, doing it like that to cancel carbon dioxide, that I need five oxygen molecules. Now, this sets me up to be able to calculate from the 33 carbon dioxides how many oxygens this would be. 33 times 5 divided by 3. Now, you might notice here the 33 divided by 3 is 11. That's the number of batches for you guys that noticed that right away. So this gives us that batch. So the 11 times 5 then means 55 oxygen. Again, the point of the unit factoring is if you maybe just don't see that batch thing, you're feeling not totally confident. So coming over here, this would require 55 oxygen to make 33 carbon dioxide, but it would also require a certain amount of propane. So we could go back here again and say, okay, 33 CO2s, for every three CO2s, I need one C3HA, one propane. Again, this gives me that batch idea. It's 11 times one is 11 propane. So I can come over here and say that would take 11 propane. And then we already have done this enough to see that again, 11 batches. So 11 times the four is going to make 44 waters also. It just gives us a way to make predictions and calculations using these chemical equations. But remember, it has to be a balanced chemical equation to start with or this doesn't work.